veteran science reporter Nicholas Wade has published an article favoring the theory that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, probably escaped from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This was published recently in the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. It's also on his Medium site, and he's published it a few other places. Uh, Nicholas Wade is a longtime science writer. He's written for Nature, Science, and many years for the New York Times. I know him mostly for this book that he wrote with back in the 1980s with William Broad called Betrayers of the Truth, Fraud and Deceit in the Halls of Science, which is a general overview of history of fraud in scientific research. It especially focuses on a large number of fraud cases or alleged fraud cases in the 1980s. Uh, there was a lot of publicity about these at the time, although it kind of subsided. And this goes into that and some of the investigations by John Dingle, who was then head of, I think, the House Science Committee or some committee like that. And after he was sort of left or voted out, I forget, these investigations kind of died down. But it's a very interesting book. It has a lot of examples of fraud in the history of science. And that's actually what I know him for. He's been controversial at times. He wrote some books about the role of genetics in the human mind, and that's a very touchy topic, race, that kind of thing. So I, I'm just not going to go through all this. You can read the article for yourself. What's notable about it is it's a very accessible, clear presentation of the information that leads one to think that the virus either certainly might have come out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and at this point might even be the most likely theory of where it came from. There's little or nothing in it that's new. In fact, a lot of this stuff has been out for a long time, probably over a year, but doesn't get a lot of mainstream publicity. There seems to be more now. For example, Robert Redfield has cl claimed that he thinks that it came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. He was the CDC director, and he was interviewed by Sanjay Gupta. So it's gotten more mainstream traction the last couple of months than previously. So the major points that probably, if you aren't aware of them, that you should be aware of, is that there was ongoing so-called gain-of-function research, specifically on bat coronaviruses, led by Dr. Sheng Li at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So they published papers with Ralph Barrick of the University of North Carolina for years, well before the outbreak on how to make these bat coronaviruses more deadly, more dangerous, more infectious. That's actually the research they were doing. They were going to caves in Yunnan, over a thousand miles from Wuhan, and collecting the bats and cultivating these viruses and trying to enhance them in various ways. That research was actually funded, yes, you guessed it, by the U.S. government, by the National Institutes of Health and the National Institute of Infectious Diseases and Allergies and whatnot. It's the one that's sort of headed by Anthony Fauci. It was controversial. There were attempts to stop it. There were protests. There were open letters by scientists urging to stop gain-of-function research funding, not just at Wuhan, but all over the world. And it was suspended for a while, but they made some special arrangement to continue to fund this research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The money from the U.S. government was fundal, funneled through, let's see if we can find him here. Yeah, this is Peter Daszak, the head of the EcoHealth Alliance, which was this foundation or entity that seems to have been used as, as a kind of shell to feed the money into the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And not surprisingly, as soon as the outbreak occurred, Peter Daszak took a major role in denouncing any suggestion that there might have been a leak or perhaps a deliberate release, but let's keep with a leak, an accident, as a conspiracy theory as totally unfounded and so on and so forth. And Nicholas Wade goes into a lot of evidence that the virus might in fact have escaped from the lab. That is the Wuhan Institute of Virology that Peter Daszak, of course, has an obvious massive conflict of interest, even though he's the U.S. representative on the World Health Organization team that went recently to uh, Wuhan and more or less tried to clear the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the people that Peter Daszak was actually funding of what would 
would be a rather major screw up if it occurred. Um, now, most of this stuff has been out for quite some time, but has not had as much mainstream coverage, often being denounced, yes, as a conspiracy theory, as anything, all sorts of topics get denounced as conspiracy theories, even if they don't involve a conspiracy at all. And indeed, the lab leak theory by itself, of course, is not a conspiracy theory. It's just somebody's, you know, it could in fact be just one person dropped a beaker, things like that. Um, you know, this guy, Riri Dagan, here's April 2020. Actually, someone, and I'll get to that, who someone might have been, a woman who claimed to be from possibly the Wuhan Institute of Virology, circulated an email in February of 2020, before the lockdown started, claiming that it had come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It was sent to a lot of biologists and people like that by email. I, I know this because one was sent to a relative of mine who is a biologist, and Someone was promoting this idea very, very early on. And of course, there's evidence of a cover-up by Chinese authorities of something to do with the outbreak very early on. They actually arrested people and threatened people to stop talking about it. I think they now claim that that was some you know, rogue local authorities in Wuhan. Of course, the Chinese government would never do something like that. <laughs> and it goes into other people who've talked about it Robert Redfield of course and it's actually been uh, gone into some detail so it's worth understanding that there's very specific credible information here there's no question that this type of gain of function research specifically on bat coronaviruses that are very similar to SARS-CoV-2 was going on at the Wuhan Institute of Virology had been going on for years they had published several papers on doing this claiming to have enhanced these viruses it was in fact funded by EcoHealth Alliance with money from U.S. government agencies, which are involved in fighting the pandemic. It might, it should make you wonder. And of course, the outbreak was in Wuhan, not seemingly in Yunnan, where you actually find the bat coronaviruses. I do want to point out that some coverage of this issue, which is highly politicized, Trump kept hinting that this had happened, of course, but he didn't actually come out and say it. Um, so, for example, this is Project Censored, and this is an article from September of 2020, which manages to avoid in the article any specific mention of these well-documented transfers of millions of dollars from the NIH and other government agencies through EcoHealth Alliance to an actual gain-of-function program at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. We know the people who are involved in it, like Dr. Sheng Li. They were publishing papers that they were doing that. If you read this account, which is ridiculing this notion here in Project Censored, there's not a hint of that. It's mostly about what a bad person Steve Bannon is. Um, and somehow that sort of, this is a typical ad hominem type of argument. Um, and this may be the woman who circulated the email I was talking about, but I don't know that. This is Dr. Li Meng Yang, and she's appeared on Fox and a bunch of other things, asserting that it was probably a, a leak. And she could be the person I have heard of that circulated this email back in February of 2020. The point that I want to make here, though, is that this is a common, I would argue, disinformation tactic that one sees in these situations very frequently where the term conspiracy theory is, is used. The lab leak theory is not a conspiracy theory. It's just a screw-up theory. If it was done deliberately, that's a conspiracy theory, but it doesn't have to be. What you often will see is a rebuttal of a kind of straw man, a version of the, quote, conspiracy theory that's easier to attack. It somehow avoids the substantive, well-documented facts, like transfers of money. So that's an important thing to understand. Transfers of money, millions of dollars, and millions of dollars was actually sent to Wuhan Institute of Virology to fund this research. Those are substantive, documentable facts, which can support a conspiracy theory, or in this case, a screw-up theory. And they show that something was going on. They're not just vague, guilt-by-association arguments. So if you want to learn more, the Nicholas Wade article is a very good starting point. It's very accessible. It's very clear. He minimizes the technical jargon and explains a lot of the issues quite well. And he gives credit to earlier sources. He doesn't really claim to have figured out very much new. There may be a few new points in the article. It's more that this is possibly working its way into the mainstream. It's difficult to know where this is going to go. It certainly is very suspicious that they were in fact doing this gain-of-function research to create souped-up 
bat coronaviruses that are were clearly similar to SARS-CoV-2. And lo and behold, it turns up in Wuhan, over a thousand miles from these caves where the bats actually live. So there's pretty good reason to wonder about that and be suspicious that Nicholas Wade kind of comes down, as not kind of, he clearly comes down favoring the leak hypothesis, although he's clear that there is no solid evidence of either of the main hypotheses, which is the lab leak, and the other hypothesis is some sort of, uh, somehow it was picked up from animals, somehow got from the bats, maybe to something else, and then into people, and there's actually no specific evidence of that either. This concludes this video presentation. If you like this video, please click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. You can avoid internet censorship by subscribing directly to our RSS news feed. Please consider sharing the link by email and on your website or blog, in addition to liking, upvoting, or sharing on increasingly censored, advertising beholden, big company social media. We have encountered such censorship. Mathematical software is developing algorithms and software to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors, and increasing the predictive power of the results. You can support our work financially by subscribing on our Patreon page, https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash mathsoft, or scanning the QR code in the lower right corner.